Hi, this is Jeff Price, lead author of Practical Aviation Security, Predicting and Preventing Future Threats. Uh, the news at TSA is considering removing screening from over 150 airports across the country uh, is disturbing. Uh, while it certainly would save TSA a lot of money, uh, other important issues must be addressed. Uh, a small aircraft would not make a very good weapon of mass destruction, uh, yet it can still be commandeered and can be an effective small weapon used against uh, a smaller ground target. But the real concern here is not some sort of 9-11 style coordinated attack of small aircraft. It's the new style of attack that uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS have been uh, promoting, which is to embolden and radicalize individuals who are already U.S. citizens to commit acts of terror, uh, like we saw in San Bernardino and Orlando and New York City, uh, where an individual drove a van into a crowd of people for several blocks. It's very possible a radicalized U.S. citizen could easily take over and terrorize a small aircraft with 30 people on board or place bombs on board several small aircraft at once. Uh, there's also an issue of the small aircraft coming into a larger airport and that possibly being a vulnerability. Um, in 2013, Terry Lowen, a radicalized uh, avionics technician uh, who worked at the Wichita Mid-Continental Airport, um, attempted to set off a car bomb. Uh, the FBI had actually caught him up in a sting operation while he was planning it and while he was headed to the airport. Uh, so he was caught by the FBI before he could carry out the attack. But Wichita is an excellent example that criminals and terrorists are not just interested in big cities. Uh, nor can we ever forget the Oklahoma City bombing in uh, 1995 at the Murrah building. Uh, so small communities are, are not I exempt from uh, these types of attacks. Uh, look, TSA might save some money from an operational perspective, but someone's going to pay for this, and uh, someone's going to pay for this change, and it's going to be the passenger. It's going to be you. The burden of the cost uh, will now fall on the larger airport operators who have to reconfigure and possibly build or rebuild terminal facilities uh, in concourses so that reverse screening checkpoints can be installed. While reverse screening was a common practice prior to 9-11, um, airport improvements over the past 17 years were based on the premise that the process was, was a thing of the past. Uh, these costs, the cost of these changes are going to be passed along to the passengers and users at the airport in the form of possibly higher airfares, uh, higher parking fees, higher ground transportation access fees. So yeah, your, your Uber and your Lyft rides might cost you more money and possibly even in price hikes on airport concessions. Uh, perhaps the TSA would consider another option, such as replacing existing TSA personnel with contract employees. The Screening Partnership Program, uh, also known as Opt-Out, uh, is already in place at 26 airports. It's not the pre-9-11 model of screening. Uh, Contract screening is actually an international model that's used all throughout the world, even at Israel, where they hire contractors to staff the screening equipment. Um, the post-9-11 model is where screening companies are certified by TSA, contracted by TSA, and overseen by TSA, not the uh, airlines as they were prior to 9-11. It, it's really unfair to shift TSA's financial burdens uh, to airport operators and leave passengers on small commuter aircraft vulnerable to, uh, uh, to acts of terrorism. So hopefully TSA reconsiders this one.